Hi there, Henry from Nine Eleven Virgin, or Street in that speech. Welcome to another video. This is a, a really quick video and a little bit different, uh, and it surrounds the IMS bearing, intermediate shaft bearing. Um, there's a lot of mystique, rumour, misinformation flying around about IMS bearings, and so I thought I'd give you my take on it, be it right or wrong. Uh, we've got a, a 997 that we're just prepping up prior to advertising for sale. And one of the jobs we're doing on it is an IMS bearing oil seal, intermediate shaft bearing oil seal. So let's have a little look at that and uh, see what it is, what it's all about, and, and go from there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but just up there, there's a little tool which we've inserted. Um, one of the things when you're going to change the uh, IMS bearing seal, it's really important to do, is to lock the timing uh, in place before you go ahead and, and, and do the work. Um, and so we put this little tool in here and also I'll see there's another uh, bolt which we insert, uh, which I'll show you now. So the other thing that we do to lock the timing in position, you can see that special bolt in there. Um, that, uh, that goes in and that's the, the second part of locking the uh, cam timing in position. Uh, you've got a little tool I'll show you from underneath and we've also put that in the lower pulley as well. So another item that you can see whilst we're underneath here is this bit of tinware here. That covers the coil packs, they tend to corrode quite a lot so you'll often hear on a 997 people changing the, uh, the tinware that goes over the, the coil packs and it just helps prevent moisture getting onto the coil packs and so we've popped uh, a pair of those on this, this engine as well. Um, we've actually also changed this, this hose here, uh, it's a bit grubby. Frustratingly, you can't buy just this section of hose from Porsche, you end up buying this and then the part which goes up into the engine there. So uh, it becomes a slightly more involved job, you have to sort of change the whole lot, but uh, we've done that on this one as well. So here we are underneath the car, looking at the back of the engine. So you would have the flywheel mounted on the back of the engine there, and then onto the flywheel you'd have the clutch, and then the gearbox behind. A couple of things, you can also see the starter motor that, which operates on the ring gear of the flywheel sitting on the top there. And then we're looking at the bottom down there for the intermediate shaft bearing or certainly the cover to the intermediate shaft bearing and that's where we've got the leak. I'll just move the light so we can have a better look. So there you go, you can see this oil weeping from the intermediate shaft oil bearing. You've got to make a, a very big distinction between oil weeping from the seal on the IMS bearing and the IMS bearing failing. And there's a lot of misinformation here. So people talk about, oh, my IMS bearing seal failed and people think, oh, that's catastrophic. It's not. Uh, the IMS seal uh, failure or, or weeping is very, very common. It's almost an elective job. You do it uh, at the time you're changing the clutch. Uh, you'd go ahead and do that job. Um, in this case, we're actually doing it as a standalone job. Uh, so we, we've pulled the gearbox and, and clutch off just to specifically do the IMS bearing. Some people talk about uh, changing and um, putting putting modified uh, IMS bearings in. Um, I've got to be honest, it's not something that I'm a huge fan of. Um, the cost is about a thousand pounds on top of uh, doing, let's say, a clutch or pulling the gearbox off to fit a, uh, a modified bearing in there. And they do have a, a limited life, so you end up having to change them every three, four years, whatever it may be. Um, and it's not something I see as a, a particularly worthwhile investment. The actual failure rate of IMS bearings is quite small. You know, we're probably talking maybe 1% failure rate. Um, it's not uh, a sort of 50 50 thing. Um, and as I say, Big distinction between the uh, seal weeping like this and, and an IMS bearing fail. To change the seal we need to pop the uh, bearing cover plate off, those three uh, bolts in there. So, uh, And then prior to that uh, we need to take the uh, timing chain tensioners off to take tension out of the timing chain so that the uh, IMS bearing doesn't get uh, moved at all. So let's, let's have a look at the uh, uh, timing chain tensioners on the workbench now. Here on the workbench you can see a couple of items. You can see these two items here, those are the timing chain uh, tensioners um, and so those have both been removed 
uh, so that you uh, so that the IMS bearing doesn't get pulled out of position. And then this is the cover for the IMS bearing. That's uh, the outside, and then that's the inside. And you can see the seal which has been replaced in there. So that's one of the two seals that's replaced when you do an IMS bearing seal. So now you can see the uh, IMS bearing cover plate removed and uh, we can do a couple of things. This is, uh, we changed two bearings when we, ch uh, sorry, two bushes or seals when we changed the IMS uh, intermediate shaft oil seal. One of the seals is just in there. You can see that seal, that black seal there. And the other seal is in the cap, which I'll show you in a minute. And the reason that we needed to lock the uh, timing uh, in place is because if you don't take the timing chain tensioners out, this bearing gets pulled up in this direction here. You can see it, it's got some movement and it, it moves up in that direction there. So in that direction there. And that means when you try and place the, uh, the cap back on uh, in there, the cover over the IMS uh, bearing, um, you can't easily put it in position. You end up trying to force it in and you can cause damage. And at this stage with the IMS bearing exposed, you can also rotate it round. You can't actually see my hand, there we go. You can rotate it round and that feels lovely. So there's no uh, problem with that bearing. That's a, that's a nice bearing. You can. So there you can see the, uh, the gearbox sitting out there. And uh, we've also got uh, the clutch there. So you've got on the clutch, you've got the friction plate there and then you've got the pressure plate underneath it. And then the flywheel will go on here, uh, which mounts onto the, the engine. And uh, the friction plate is clamped between the pressure plate and the, the flywheel. Um, so that's the, uh, the clutch. So there you go. That just covers briefly the IMS bearing on this car, we, the, the, the IMS bearing oil seal uh, change. And as I say, an IMS bearing oil seal is not a kind of major failure. It, 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 it's, it's a fairly routine thing to find when you're looking around these Porsche engines um, and it doesn't mean that the engine's about to blow up and you need to rush out and change the, the bearing itself. You know, once you've got the, the cover off, uh, you can rotate the, uh, the bearing and, and in this case it, it felt lovely. So the bearing itself is fine, but the oil seals needed changing because we were getting some oil weeping through, which we wanted to correct. Um, but as I say, do not confuse IMS bearing oil seals with an IMS bearing failure. Totally different thing. And uh, yeah, d d don't be confused. Hope you found it useful. I'm Henry. We're 9 Virgin, the Porsche people in Uxbridge. Many thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>